What's up YouTube, back again with another new video. So last year, I think around the same time, I released a uh, women's streetwear trends of 2017. And then kind of later on, I did one which uh, was kind of like a reaction to men and women's trends with my girlfriend. I released a favorite and least favorite women's trends video. So yeah, I mean, it's been almost like a full year, I believe, since I've done anything related to women's fashion. But this time around, I would like to give it another go ahead for 2018 because there is a lot of new stuff and a lot of similar stuff that has kind of either maintained popularity or just completely risen in popularity out of nowhere that I personally would like to discuss. If uh, any of you have any ideas for future kind of uh, women's fashion related videos, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And make sure to check out the other two trend videos I did. They were kind of more specifically tailored towards a met the men's side of streetwear, but make sure to check those out. I will leave links kind of popping up here or at the end of the video or in the description and comment section below. Now, I've written down quite a few trends. So if you see me peer down, uh, that's what I'm looking at. It's not like a sign for help. But anyway, uh, let's get started with the first one, which is the tiny matrix shades. And what I mean by matrix is, if any of you remember from like the late 90s, early 2000s, the original three matrix movies, they all wore really tiny framed sunglasses with pretty small lenses as well. I know I actually on a live stream sometime last year, I have like a lot of those glasses for some reason and I wore like four of them like in a row or maybe it was Finn, I don't remember. But I really actually like that trend, although I feel like the, ma the mass majority of people who I have seen wearing it have been women as opposed to men, but it is a pretty unisex trend that pretty much anyone could wear. It kind of does matter though, the shape of your face, the size of your face, a lot of that stuff does come into play. Now, why a lot of the small sunglasses personally look bad on me is I have thick, giant eyebrows. So sometimes you see too much eyebrow protruding off the top, but that can be corrected with kind of like a more square framed, like tiny frame, because those I feel like have more coverage like this and they have more of that like a uh, Cyclops from the X-Men look to them. And there are a, quite a wide variety of brands, but I wouldn't say that the brand on these glasses really matters. You could probably go to any thrift store and find stuff that looks exactly like this and you'll pretty much be on trend if that's what you're looking for. For me personally, I just like the way they look. I think they look funny on me, but I feel like it's a trend that I've seen women pull off better than men because I don't know, like I, I feel like a lot of other people when they try to wear it, it looks kind of funny. Just like how I said it looks on me, it looks kind of funny on me. But anyway, moving on to another style of sunglasses that I am genuinely surprised got popular completely out of nowhere. And it is the kind of like sport, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Like those like sunglasses that people who ride on the Tour de France wear, or like a, a dad who's taking his daughter to a softball game, but he takes the sport way too seriously and he's just screaming at everybody. Like those Oakley shades, those giant Oakley shades with like the purple orange mirrored tint to the lenses. I've been seeing Kim wear them, Kylie wear them, Bella Hadid wear them, pretty much all these big social media influ influencers rocking them. And I even think there's like a brand called Pre-Workshop, which I'll probably be discussing a little bit more in detail on the next trend. They make these shades. I've seen Oakley make, obviously, they're kind of the originator of these shades. And then there's all these like small, like women's streetwear brands starting to make these shades. And I haven't fully seen that transition over to the men's side, but man, I'm not too big a fan of those. I, I do think you look kind of like a beetle, but hey, if you like them, go ahead and rock them. But they're a little too Power Ranger-esque for my personal taste, a little too loud, even though I'm starting to kind of come over to more of the loud coloring. But with regard to the sunglasses, I'm not a big fan of the way that those look. And moving on to the next trend, we have the bike shorts. Now, this is actually a trend I do like. Funny enough, I mean, Yeezy season did showcase bike shorts in the past, although I feel like it never really fully caught on until it kind of transitioned into a neon bright colored bike shorts. Obviously, there are a lot of brands that still release a lot of tonal patterns or a lot of tonal colors rather. But with regards to like the bright neon orange, the neon greens, the highlighter yellows, I kind of think I like that style a lot better than, than the tonal uh, variant of the bike short. 
And once again, like I said earlier, the uh, the brand pre workshop has been releasing like these bright neon colored pairs of uh, bike shorts. Uh, they're like spandex bike shorts, pretty much. But then the cut is obviously different than something a professional cyclist would wear. And I personally really like the look. I've been seeing it styled with a lot of boxier fitting vintage tees, a lot of kind of oversized jackets and things of that nature. And it's a look I think is going to last pretty much throughout the entire summer. And it might even carry over into next year. I think it's just a really good look. It may be a little hard to pull off for some, but overall it's not that much of an expensive trend to get into. I think some of these bike shorts are only like 20 to $70 max. I haven't really seen any that are priced absolutely insane unless you're going for something a bit more like plain, like the Yeezy season ones. Those aren't really too bright colored if I remember correctly. But yeah, overall I actually do like that trend. And segueing nicely into the next one, like I already talked about with the bike shorts, I'd say we're kind of at the end of the, uh, or we kind of been at the end for a while of the whole, I'm only gonna wear olive drab and tan and beige and dark brown. We're kind of over that, that Yeezy kind of tonal, uh, palette of color. It's kind of out the door nowadays. I feel like I've been seeing a lot more kind of like women wear bright colors a lot more like a lot of the cut of the garments that they are wearing are very similar to last year. But then the color I just dropped something but then the color of everything has definitely become a lot louder this year. And it's actually something I really like. I mean, you're seeing, like I said, a lot of bright orange, neon green, a lot of pastel colors as well, a lot of pastel blues. And this kind of goes across the board, whether it be with footwear, whether it be with outerwear, whether it be with a shorts, trousers, sunglasses, hats, it's pretty much everywhere. And I think it's gonna stay that way for a while. I feel like we've been in that kind of area where we were only wearing and this goes for men as well. We've been only wearing a lot of rather dull colors, you know, blacks, grays, uh, whites, creams, olive drab. I think that's finally kind of over. I think people are starting to experiment a lot more with the brighter colors. And it's personally something I'd like to dabble into as well. And moving on to something that I actually mentioned last year, I think it was in a men's trends video, but it was also pretty popular with women as well. It is the bulky sneakers, which seem to have not lost any speed at all. They just keep getting more and more popular. And now instead of just Balenciaga, instead of just Raf Simmons, you have so many other brands making them. Granted, Raf does work for Calvin Klein. He is what creative director of Calvin Klein now, but they all, they do make now these like Calvin Klein, like bulky sneakers that are kind of a bit more toned down, believe it or not. And I wonder how that's going to carry over. I wonder if uh, people are going to actually go out and purchase those or if they're going to want more of the bright, loud colored pairs like I've talked about already with the, uh, the bright colored other garments. And I really do think that maybe it's not going to die anytime soon. I was kind of going to do a video specifically on the dad shoes once again, but it doesn't look like it's dying. Like you're seeing a lot more new balances as well. And those can come in a variety of colors. I, there are some that obviously are a bit more kind of norm core, dad core aesthetic, a little bit more plain. And then there's a lot that are really vibrant. And I've seen a lot of these just like completely sell out in full size run. And I actually like the New Balance side of things. I've been seeing kind of some of these shoes come out from Puma. Uh, there was one from Adidas that I did like. I didn't really like the Puma ones. I'm not a big fan of the ones that recently kind of came out from Gucci that I think say Gucci right on the side in really big letters. And then there's those Gucci ones that look like like Thanos from freaking Marvel fucking Avengers Infinity War. Those were hideous, and I think those were Gucci as well, actually, fuck. But overall, I'm pretty sure this giant sneaker trend is at least here to stay for like another two years. It, it just has not lost any popularity. It's only just kept growing and growing, and now we're even seeing fast fashion chains such as H&M and Zara start to produce their own variant of these bulky sneakers. Now, could that be the nail in the coffin for the trend? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that just widens its kind of a consumer base, which is highly, highly possible because usually once things trickle down into fast fashion, that's how you know it's becoming a pretty large and prevalent trend amongst, you know, the, uh, the street, like the streetwear or even just the fashion community in general. But, 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 moving on to the last one that I can remember off the top of my head, like I mentioned in my last trend video or the one prior to that, we are seeing a lot of World Cup themed items, whether it be 
reproductions of uh, vintage jerseys, so retro jerseys of old teams, whether it be just other brands like Louis Vuitton, Versace, uh, Acne Studios, all producing their own kind of version of what they think a soccer or football jersey would look like. And I really do like this trend. Like I mentioned it in the, uh, the menswear streetwear trends video, it's something I'm always going to like regardless just because I like the sport. But I do see this being a very in the moment trend. If you really do like it, you're going to be in for a treat once World Cup se once World Cup fever is over. And I mean, the World Cup ends in what, like a week? Like it ends like this week, I think. So all that stuff, all those jerseys from all these brands, I can almost guarantee will be like 40 to 50% off. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced all this World Cup themed uh, bags, jerseys, hats, shorts, all of it will be really cheap. So if you guys like that stuff, that will be the time. August time frame will be the time to buy all this stuff. And kind of the ones that are more specifically tailored towards women, at least what I've noticed, are a lot of cropped um, football jerseys, whether it be like a classic um, recreation of what the old Spain national team jersey looks like. I know Adidas is selling a cropped one for women, as well as a Germany one. I think a Brazil one is also available, but I'm not entirely sure off the top. But yeah, like I said, there's so much variety pertaining to who's producing these jerseys, whether it be Gosha, Adidas, Umbro. And like I said, there are a lot of jerseys that are cut more towards a, like a feminine style. But if you're a guy, you could probably get away with wearing some of those too. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of the lines have been kind of blurred and it doesn't really matter whether you're male or female. You can kind of just wear whatever you want nowadays, which is kind of great for those of us who just want to express our own individuality. So don't be afraid to try out any of the trends that I mentioned in this video if you are a guy watching this because it's not really anything too wild. I don't think anything I mentioned on here, except for the bike shorts, I, I don't want to see no dude with rocking bike shorts, <laughs> if I'm honest. But everything else is pretty much fairly unisex, but it's just been some of the things I did mention have just been more prevalent in being trendy for women as opposed to men. But yeah, let me know if you guys want more videos like this. I will possibly be doing one of these trend videos with either a friend so we can get their reaction, like kind of like a hot or not type video, possibly with my girlfriend again, uh, maybe a, a family member if any of them want to do uh, one of these videos with me or possibly a subscriber. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what uh, the future entails. But Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram so you can catch the live streams. And that's pretty much it. Peace out, YouTube.